In this video, we're going to go ahead and do an example of constructing the root locus by hand using three or four of the, the simple rules that Evans developed. Let's go ahead and let our control law be given by a standard uh, compensator where we have 1 plus z times s over 1 plus s. So z is the parameter that we're going to vary in this example. And let's let our uh, plant be given by 9 over s squared. Uh, this is basically a, a simple model of a spacecraft. So we know that the root locus closed loop, we know that the closed loop characteristic equation is going to be 1 plus c of s times g of s. This is assuming unity feedback. And therefore we write down 1 plus 1 plus z of times s over 1 plus s times 9 over s squared, and that is going to be equal to 0. And now we need to separate out the z from all the other terms. So if I go ahead and multiply through by 1 plus s times s squared, I have 1 plus s times s squared is uh, plus 1 plus z times s pl uh, times 9, and that's got to be equal to 0. And I go ahead and separate out the z. Notice this part here is going to go over here with uh, this, this, this part of the uh, characteristic equation. So I end up with s squared plus s to the third plus 1 plus uh, 9s times z is equal to 0. So here's the parameter that we're going to vary. Now I divide through, and I end up with 1 plus z times 9s all over s to the third plus s squared plus 1 is equal to 0. So this is the transfer function that I want to look at so that I can find out what's going to happen as I vary z, and I'm going to find out what happens to the poles of this system. So first we know from rule number 1 that the we start at the poles and end at the zeros. So in this case, using MATLAB, I can find that the poles are equal to minus 2.5, and these are all approximate numbers, and 0 0.7 plus or minus j times 1.76, and then that's a set of things, and the zeros are just zero, and then there's actually two at infinity. So I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to go from some some poles here uh, to all three of these zeros. So rule number two tells us that there's a branch of the root locus on the real axis between the uh, the zero at s equals zero and the pole at s equals uh, minus two point five, and this comes from the rule because there's a there's a, a root, branch of the root locus uh, on the left hand side of an odd number of uh, zeros or zero samples. So in other words, if I plot the real part here versus the imaginary part here, and I look at there's a zero there, there's a pole there. If I'm to the right <clears throat> over here, there's an even number of poles and zeros on my, um, if I'm on the left over here, there's an even number of poles and zeros. But when I'm in between this pole and this zero, then there is an odd number of poles to my right hand side. So I would say, okay, there's a branch of the locus there. By the way, the other poles so far are out over here. Rule number three tells us that these there are um, asymptotes, and the center of asymptotes is given by alpha, which is I take the sum of the poles minus the sum of the zeros, and I divide that by the number of uh, uh, poles uh, finite poles and subtract the number of finite 
zeros. So up here, the number of finite poles is 3, and the number of finite zeros is 1, so I get 2 there. So I add up all the pole locations, so that's minus 2.5, and then I add up all the um, the real parts of the zeros, so I get, and then subtract, so I get minus uh, 0 0.7 plus 0 0.7, and then divide the whole thing by 2, and I end up with, uh, after some rounding error, I end up with minus 0 0.5. Finally, rule 3 tells us that we can calculate the uh, angle of the asymptotes by looking at 180 degrees plus 360 degrees times uh, n, sorry, L minus 1 all over 2. And L here is going to go from 1 to 2, where L is the number of, is this number here. It's n minus m. So I get, and that means that L is 1 here. So I get 1 at 90 degrees. And when L is 2, we see that I get 1 at 270 degrees. So going back to my root locus here, I've got at minus 0 0.5. That's alpha. There's going to be an asymptote that departs at, that's 90 degrees there, and then 270 degrees there. Now we can look at rule number four, which talks about the angle of departure for the root locus from a given pole. So let's go ahead and look at one of the poles with positive real part, and I'll put that here. So that's going to be um, at 0 0.736. There's also a pole down here, which is its complex conjugate pair. We have uh, there at uh, minus 1.76 and at plus 1.76. And I have a zero here, and I've got a pole out here at minus 2.47. And what I have to do now is draw the angles from every pole and every zero to the pole that I'm interested in looking at in terms of its angle of departure. And we call these angles from poles to the pole, we call those phi, I'll call this phi 1. This one is phi 2. And this is, uh, we use psi, so this is psi 1. And I can go ahead and calculate these angles. Obviously, phi 1 is just 90 degrees because I've got, uh, if I draw this line a little straighter, if you just go 90 degrees up because they're conjugate pairs. And we can calculate phi 2. It's just the atan of the opposite divided by, uh, divided by the adjacent. And so I have to take the real part of this and then, uh, sorry, the imaginary part of this pole and then add the real part of the pole to the real part of uh, the second pole here. So when I write all that down, I end up with the arctangent of 1.76 over uh, 2.47 plus 0 0.74, and that comes out to uh, 28.6 degrees. And I can calculate psi 1 in a similar way. I get the arc tangent of 1.76, that's the vertical distance, this distance right from here to here, and then I need this horizontal distance, which is um, 0 0.736, and that comes out to be 66.6 degrees. I can write down the angle of departure is equal to the sum of all of the size minus the sum of all of the fees, except for there's no uh, angle associated with this particular pole, and then I subtract 180, and I subtract 360 times L minus 1, and here L is just 1. So in this case, what I end up with is 66.6 degrees minus 90 degrees minus 28.6 degrees minus 180 degrees, and I end up with, in this case, uh, minus 232 point zero seven degrees and so that's an angle negative that way I can go ahead and make that positive that's the same as a positive angle uh, or take say 360 degrees 
plus minus 232.07, and I end up with 127.9 degrees. So what that angle is, if I were to draw in here, say, that's that angle right there. That's the angle of departure for the root locus. And so what we see is that it's going to go, and then it has to go to an asymptote. So it's probably going to go to this one here. Uh, so it's just going to come up and go off like that. Now, for the angle of departure from the other poles, uh, we can look at, say, uh, this one. And this one is actually pretty easy to do because of the symmetry involved. Um, since since there is at, since this pole we know is going to go to that zero, and we know that this pole is going to go off to that zero, and assuming there's no break in or breakout point, then we know that this uh, this pole should go out to that zero and should have the same angle of departure. Um, we can certainly calculate it, uh, and we would get. Um, a similar kind of result. Um, the difference here is that we have to uh, recalculate these angles because I need angles from this zero to this pole now, right? But that's just the negative of the angle we calculated over there. This is going to be negative 90 degrees, and again, negative of the angle that we calculated there. So we end up with minus 66.6 degrees minus, uh, minus 90 degrees minus minus 28.57 degrees and then we have to subtract 180 degrees and subtract 360 uh, but then here L is 2 and we end up with minus 487.9 degrees which again uh, if we add 360 that gets us to minus 127.9 degrees or if we Add another 360, we get 232.1 degrees. And so this and this obviously are the same, only opposite in direction. So a positive angle is, is counterclockwise, a negative angle is counterclockwise. All right, finally, the last thing that we can do is um, <clears throat> go ahead and look at the uh, angle of arrival. Uh, for the um, for these, uh, and we know that this only works for finite zeros. So we look at the angle of arrival for this pole here, and again we have to add up all these angles. But it's clear that these angles are the same. So uh, those are just going to but negative, so they're going to cancel each other out, and we only have to worry about this one. Well, this angle is just uh, zero, so we end up with zero minus psi one minus psi two, which that whole thing is equal to zero, uh, plus 180 degrees, so we get 180 degrees, which all that means is that as this thing is coming in, the angle from some point over here, say there, that's 180 degrees. So finally, we can go ahead and draw the entire root locus as we've calculated it and we end up with and here's my hand sketch and then we'll go ahead and do this in MATLAB so you can see the, uh, the difference and here's the imaginary part so I have real imaginary we had a pole out here we had a pole it's conjugate pair there a zero there we had a pole here we said that the angle of asymptotes was at minus zero, or sorry, the center of asymptotes is at minus 0 0.5. We go ahead and draw in the asymptotes. <laughs> Not very good asymptotes. And we know the angle of departure was 128, so this is going to go off like that. This one's going to go off like that. And there's root locus from here along the real axis to that zero. So let's go ahead and compare that in MATLAB. 